This is by far the best way to gain holistic body weight strength, like the muscle up V-stand or handstand push-up. Hey, I'm Lee Weiland with Pacific Rim Athletics and welcome to training. Number one, train holistically. One example is what we call a couplet. Here's how it works. Take press handstand. This is already training a whole body, but mostly shoulders, back, and core. And couple that with the opposite position, hollow back training, like bridge progressions, walkovers, or hollow backs if you can hold them. This builds flexibility and strength simultaneously, but it will require understanding the progressions of each and then building a framework suitable to your body type, goals, and current situation. We'll typically put two to three couplets together for strength or create mini circuits of four to five moves that essentially does the same thing. You'll see Chase press handstand in a time frame of 12 weeks following training just like this. And this leads to the second principle, train with respect to timeline. Often, we get bogged down in all sorts of things and then distractions amass. And you find yourself down the line without any progress or backsliding. It's okay, just regroup and move forward. But understanding your body's timelines are critical. So how did Che achieve a press handstand in 12 weeks? And that alongside a V stand and the muscle up without kipping. I'll show you that right now. The way we train is this. We train hard the first three weeks. Then we have a deload week. It's called final week. Here, you'll take training slower for recovery. And on the final Friday of the month, you don't train at all. This is the day we actually do level tests, so this ensures that everyone is fresh as well. And you'll see people testing for advancement in all five elements of powerbatics, like handstand, ninja strength, power moves, circ, and free run. If you level up, then you advance to different movements and routines the following month. It works pretty well. So Che would have gone through three quarters of her first training block with us. Month one, then rest. Month two, then rest. Month three, then rest. And then by that time she was doing press handstands, V stands, and muscle ups. We also do weekly strength tests with online students. This makes sure that students continue to make progress and can be encouraged to keep working hard. At the facility, we don't do strength tests because the coaches can see pretty quickly who's pushing hard with focus and who isn't. And that leads to the third principle. And this one is one of the most important. Train mentally but not how you think. Even beyond the training, there are many opportunities for growth. One example outside the gym is visualization throughout the day. This is critical, and you'll hear Olympic gold medalists talk about this all the time. But you don't even need to be doing anything competitive. Just thinking about what things are good and true and pure, like your strength progress, towards a muscle-up V-stand or handstand push-up. Another even more important example is developing your inner voice. This is huge. Often, people will rely on external motivators. Those external motivators can be one of two things. The opposite of reward in behavior modification, that can be negative reinforcement, which means taking something away or giving something undesirable, i.e. a punishment. The other is reward, either taking away pain or giving something that is desirable. Either way, dependence on any of this can make bad habits for the future. You need to develop your own inner voice. So let's say you're trying to build the core strength to fix your back pain or to be able to hold basics like a handstand. I've made other videos about that, but as an example, you're trying to do the 100 hollow rocks. We do this one all the time, 100 hollow rocks, without stopping, without pausing. And I tell students, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna feel like acid pouring on your core, and it's gonna feel like you can't breathe. So hold your breath and dive into the pain. Encourage and push yourself, saying, Keep going when things get hard. Pound your chest, scream out loud, whatever it takes to keep moving forward. And this leads to the fourth principle. What do you do with setbacks? Setbacks will occur. But one secret is to not think about them as setbacks. Think about life as a journey that heads in a particular trajectory, but has a very whirling, swirling aspect to it. Like particle physics, nothing is stationary and nothing travels in a perfectly straight line. Not even light. Depending on how you look at it, it's either a bunch of particles moving around while they're moving forward, or they're a bunch of waves. Your life is the same. So relax and don't focus on the negatives. Realize that even in not focusing on the negatives, you're winning. So now a concrete example. What if you tear your shoulder? Che had a shoulder injury. It was painful and really tough because she's an extremely hard worker. So learning to rest was part of the process and she came back even stronger. There's kids and teens who often get injured on their friend's trampolines, which I don't advocate. And we have them come to the facility and work core and upper body just to keep things moving forward. 
Then he went through five hip surgeries, four knee surgeries, a shoulder surgery, and even a spine surgery. And none of that stopped him. There's always a way forward. And this leads to the fifth principle, staying connected. There's a saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Let me ask you something. Who do you train with? Who are you connected with? You will be much stronger if you have a broad context of positive people around you. There's a book that talks about this principle in a negative light. It's called Lord of the Flies. On the other hand, if you're dialed into what I call the peer ladder, you'll grow significantly. Here's how it works. Peers behind you, you, peers ahead of you, then your parents, mentors, teachers, coaches. And the peer ladder is filled with people of all ages and levels. It's like immersion into a language to become fluent. And so when you realize, hey, there are people looking up to me, you perform better, really pushing to get that muscle up or flair or new kata or hand balancing technique or free running skill. And you also have people ahead of you that you're trying to emulate who maybe already can do one arm pull-ups, handstands or flips. And mentors are there helping you every rung up the ladder. So apply these and see some remarkable changes in your training. And a couple reminders, you can literally talk with us in the next day or two on a free coaching session. You do have to qualify, but if you do, it'll be great to do a deep dive with you. And if you'd like, we can walk you through enrollment. There's also videos coming up that are designed to help you and keep you making progress. Either way, see you in the next video or hopefully in training soon.